my previous videos about the gasification of waste fuels, straw and corn stalks, provoked a heated reaction and many calls. I'd like to continue this topic. Here, I will describe an experimental straw-fired fluidized bed gasifier for 400 kilowatts of thermal energy with all the dimensions, take it and make it. I have already made reviews on different layer and cyclone types of gasifiers capable of gasifying straw. However, I didn't mention fluidized bed gasifiers that also successfully gasify it. Today, only this type of gasifier is used all over the world. There are no industrial layer type gasifiers like the Embert downdraft devices in advanced countries. The business has been playing a big game for a long time there. One fluidized bed gasifier column, comparable in size to an Embert gasifier, can produce 37 times more energy. Layer downdraft and direct flow gasifiers have limited capacity. For example, coal-fired direct flow gasifiers could not be scaled up larger than 3.5 meters in diameter. They produce about 10 megawatts at most. At the same time, fluidized bed gasifiers can produce 300 megawatts of heat or even more. Their advantages include omnivorousness. They can run on high ash fuel, for example, low deposit, up to 5 meters, peat containing 20% of soil. To gasify such peat in a downdraft gasifier, it should be briquette. Complex grates should also be made to break up the ash which builds up in operation. And such a gasifier will not be very powerful. It will give a few megawatts at most being 6 meters high. On the other hand, in a fluidized bed gasifier, peat can be burned as it is in a dusty state, and ash will make no problems. It will just fly out through the cyclone. Extracted dust like peat is called milled peat. It is fed into a gasifier in this fine form. Such gasifiers have only one disadvantage, they are unable to operate flexibly. If a downdraft gasifier on wood chips installed on a car can output from 10 to 100% of its capacity, when the engine is idling or at full throttle, a fluidized bed gasifier will work only within its full capacity. Fuel particles must hover inside the column in the air from powerful blowers. If the airflow is reduced, the particles will not move inside the column and the gasification process will deteriorate. Here I will talk about this gasifier in terms of gasification of straw, and also corn stalks and similar fuels. There are countries with no other sources of biomass for gasification. But this type of gasifier may also gasify sewer sludge, high ash powder coal, underfired and containing up to 40% of soil, and other small particle fuels, including grass. Such gasifiers work on pellets, wood chips, and RDF pellets. They are kind of omnivorous machines. But back to the straw. It is a very finicky fuel that is difficult to burn in boilers. They must be made of special steel so as not to deteriorate from straw. The capacity of such boilers will be limited. If a gasifier is applied, straw can be used in the existing industrial gas boilers. It would only be necessary to change their burners. There will be no need to build new multi-megawatt straw boilers and demolish the old gas ones. For example, if a cogeneration plant should be transferred to peat, there will be no need to build a new boiler for it or coal dust mixed with soil. Each fuel requires its own boiler. No one will build a new boiler for each type of fuel at a cogeneration plant, but a fluidized bed gasifier will turn any fuel into gas. I photographed dozens of books on fluidized bed gasifiers while collecting my library of more than 600 books on gas generation. Soviet scientists were already making such devices a couple of decades after World War II. They designed giant coal and peat-fired fluidized bed gasifiers and wrote many works on this subject. We have accumulated tremendous practical experience. The last people who tried to implement this technology were scientists Maestrenko and Korchevoy. I've been to the institute where they worked. Like other know-how holders, they bypassed the authorities and proposed building fluidized bed gasifiers at cogeneration plants for non-marketable high ash fine coal, stocked in slag heaps here and there. The scientists didn't succeed because of corruption. Coal was supplied by corrupt high-ranking officials and it was dangerous to interrupt these flows. As people at the institute explained to me, the scientists buzzed about their invention and even wrote a book, I held it in my hands, but they both died not having built anything. All my conversations with customers end with the words, you first show how it works, and will come, look and think. So, I will show how to assemble such a straw gasifier. I will also give its dimensions so that you can make it and then show it to everyone interested. I will rely on an experimental straw gasifier for 400 kilowatts of heat, assembled and tested back in the 90s.
I will also show all the figures and results obtained. According to statistics, 2,340 million tons of wheat straw were produced worldwide in 1992. 80% of it could be burnt. For 1 kilogram of wheat grown, 1.5 kilograms of straw remained. For the Soviet downdraft straw gasifier I mentioned, the straw had to be cut to 5 to 10 millimeters and dried to 6%. In a cyclone gasifier, it has to be cut to 1 millimeter. In a fluidized bed gasifier, the straw was cut to 15 millimeters. Its moisture content was 11% during the tests. Silica sand was chosen as an additional element in the gasifier. Further, I will call it sand. It is meant to distribute heat over the fuel layer and equalize the processes in the column. The sand melting point is 1610 degrees. The melting temperature of wheat straw ash is 1054 degrees. The reaction between them led to agglomeration at a much lower temperature, the straw centered with the sand forming large lumps, and the process stopped at high temperature. Apparently, at 800 degrees the straw ash softened, and this was enough for it to stick to the sand. To find the optimum temperature for the process at which the pieces of straw and sand would not fuse, three temperatures and different ash content were chosen. The results are shown in Table 5. Table 6 shows the wheat straw ash composition. It turned out that the sand began to fuse with the straw ash into pieces of 3 to 5 millimeters in size already at 800 degrees. The problem turned out to be potassium oxide. It was abundant in the straw ash and adhered to the sand. According to the tests, the temperature must be kept at 750 degrees in order not to melt potassium and not to jeopardize the process. 0.26 kilograms of air should be supplied per 1 kilogram of straw for this purpose. This is what a 400 kilowatts heat producing fluidized bed gasifier looks like, figure 1. Figure 2 shows the air and straw feeding mechanism as well as the grates. The gasifier is made of 310 grade stainless steel pipe with a diameter of 255 millimeters and an 8 mm thick wall. Its height is 2700 millimeters. To avoid making one undismountable column, it was assembled from four pieces with bolt flanges and a 3 mm thick gasket capable to withstand 1000 degrees. The column parts are 510 mm, 383 mm, 255 mm, and 128 mm long. Two rectangular viewing windows, 75 mm x 150 mm, were installed to observe particles inside the column. The windows were placed in its lower part at a height of 35 mm and 220 mm. Quartz glass observation windows withstood the temperature of 1,250 degrees. A cyclone filter was mounted on the top. The column and cyclone were heat proof not to lose energy. Figure 2 shows the feeding system. It had two grates and a separate blower supplying air through them. Figure 3 shows what these grates looked like. The large grate in the figure above has 265 2 mm holes. The distance between the holes is 11 mm, apparently, between their centers. The holes are designed so that their area is 1.65% of the total grid area. As you can see, there is a 75 mm hole in the middle, into which a tube is welded. See Figure 4. As you can see, the grates are mounted on flanges so that they can be removed. The auger-fed straw cut into 15 mm pieces with a moisture content of 11%. Two Engineer R4310A2 blowers supplied 4.87 cubic meters of air per minute through a 50 mm pipe under a pressure of 2,120 mm of the water column. There were airflow meters on the pipes to know the airflow rate. The gasifier started in the following way. First, the layer was heated to 600 degrees with a propane burner, it can be seen in Figure 1. Thermocouples T1 and T3 measured the air temperature at the reactor input. Thermocouple T2 was installed just above the fuel auger inlet. Thermocouples 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 monitored the temperature in the working layer, apparently, where the sand was hovering. Thermocouples 10 and 11 monitored the temperature in the column above. The next thermocouple T12 monitored the temperature of the gas entering the cyclone. Pressure gauges, capable of withstanding a 2,000 mm water column pressure, measured pressure in many points. The first one was 50 mm near the grate. The next ones, 2, 3, 4, 5, were at an equal 120 mm distance from the first one and each other. It is indicated that 250 mm of silica sand was poured into the column. The figure doesn't show this accurately. 
It seems that the sand was poured at the height of the third pressure gauge somewhere about 350 millimeters away from the larger grate. Let's assume that the sand layer was 250 millimeters high. In the beginning, the primary air blower was switched on, see figure 2. The air velocity of 0.36 meters per second provided fluidization slightly above the minimum threshold. Then the propane burner was turned on to heat the column to 600 degrees in 55 minutes. Then the burner was turned off and the air supply was left on. As I understood, when the column above the sand cooled to 500 degrees, the second fan was turned on. It heaved the sand in the inner tube and the straw fed into the cylinder by the auger. When the straw started to enter the gasifier, the air supply also started. The air volume was 20% more than necessary for complete combustion. Let me remind you that for the complete combustion of 1 kg of wood, 6 kg of air is required. Straw's chemical composition is almost similar to wood, its ash content is just about 3% higher. So, about 7.8 kg of air per 1 kg of straw was supplied. The layer began to rapidly heat up to 750 degrees, i.e. the working temperature of the gasifier. Then the air supply was reduced to 0.26 kg of air per 1 kg of straw so that the temperature in the layer was kept at 750 degrees all the time. For this purpose, 0.95 kg of straw per minute was fed. Figure 9 shows how much air and how much straw was fed. The figure also shows that the amount of air was always the same. Apparently, it is a precisely calculated figure to keep the sand layer hovering. Only the amount of straw fed changed. Figure 10 shows how the temperature rose depending on the amount of fuel supplied. During the experiments, when the temperature exceeded 750 degrees, lumps of ash and sand began to stick together which was visible through the observation windows. Then the fuel supply was stopped for several minutes. After the pieces of ash and sand broke up due to mutual friction, the auger resumed fuel feeding. The calorific value of the gas is not revealed in the paper, but in the next work, where mullite was used instead of sand, it turned out that, as in the last experiment, the temperature must be kept at 750 degrees. 0.1 to 0.26 kilograms of air was fed per 1 kilogram of straw. Gas with a caloric value of 860 kilocalories was obtained at 0.165 kilograms of air per 1 kilogram of straw. In the second study, mullite was used. It showed itself well in straw gasification even at 900 degrees. It was sifted through a 0.425 mm sieve. Apparently, the sand in the first experiment had the same size. Table 2 shows the size of the mullite powder. Mullite gave no advantage, the tests showed that the process must be carried out at 750 degrees. By the way, this also applies to wood. Call me to get similar gasifier designs. My WhatsApp is below the video. See you soon.